Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. Uh, a while ago I posted a few uh, videos where I analyzed uh, the uh, objectively what's inside high resolution music and I showed a number of defects and problems in production of high res music where the extra bandwidth was used to basically ship us more garbage. Uh, some good came out of one of them in that the uh, independent label actually went back and corrected those mistakes. So did some good. This morning, somebody reached out to me and said, hey, how about analyzing some of the PSIDU's in-house label, the Octave uh, Recording Studio, to see how they produce their music. As you, some of you know, I've been analyzing their hardware products. So he was curious to see, you know, do, do a good job there or are there issues in, in that as well? So I thought that was a good idea and uh, went on their website and uh, uh, found out that they have one album from Don Grusin, uh, uh, Dave Grusin's brother, and it's available on LP and a bunch of other formats we're not interested in. But luckily, they, uh, by the way, those other formats are quite expensive, $60 uh, for, uh, for vinyl. But luckily, they have a package, download package for $29 for that you get a DSC-64, which is the native uh, format uh, of the recording. Then they have 24-bit uh, 192 and 24-bit uh, 96 and 24-bit 44.1. You get them all for $29. Pretty steep price, uh, but uh, you know, compared to an album you buy in CD for $10 or $12 or stream it for free uh, on this thing. But for high-res downloads, I say slightly overpriced. I uh, pay anywhere between $15 to $20 for high-res music that I have purchased. So not too much complaining about this if the music's good and fidelity is good. And that's what we're going to try to uh, examine. So as I mentioned, uh, this is uh, the file original recordings in DST. So we're going to start with DST. Um, what is DSD? This is called DSD64 or 1X DSD. It's the original digital format that goes on Super Audio CD, SA CD format that came out 20, 30 years ago. Um, the format as a physical format died more or less. There's some releases still today, but you know, it's not it never achieved mainstream status. But the digital version of it for downloading has survived, and people actually now have a double and uh, quadruple rates and even higher rate version of DSD six called DSD64, 120 and 256, 512, and the game goes on. And uh, to analyze DSD files, I have to use a special program, the uh, Music Scope, which unfortunately is not available anymore to uh, purchase. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a tool I have for analyzing this. I'll then show you the PCM versions uh, separately. So let's go ahead and, and play this track. The track is called Sonandas, uh, which is uh, Japanese. Uh, I don't know what he's called one of his drags, Japanese race, but uh, there it is. So we already can tell what's going on in here instantly. So if you look in here, we have the piano notes playing. This is the beginning of our spectrum. Uh, uh, I guess it goes down to zero hertz. And then this is 22 kilohertz, which will be the limit for CD format. And then the... Uh, it's showing me up to 88 kilohertz for this DSD file. Uh, but, you know, let me play it again and pay attention to this section. You can see that this section goes up and down as the notes play. But this area does not change at all. There's a technical reason for that. Um, DSD64 is a one-bit format means that the entire the digital value is either captured as a one and a zero. That's it. Nothing in between. Uh, well, then how do you get all the, you know, bit depth that we need to have a great dynamic range? Um, the, the, that one bit system generates a ton of noise, much like if you, some of you remember uh, black and white uh, newspaper uh, pictures uh, had grayscales in it, even though they didn't have more than a black or white either, uh, but they by, but it was very very noisy. That noise can actually be what is called noise shaped and pulled out of the audible spectrum over here into uh, another spectrum mathematically, and uh, that's exactly what's been done. So there was a ton of noise in here in this one bit format that would make this unlistenable, but by noise shaping they pulled all that noise into the ultrasonic 
region. Now, if you buy an SACD that was such encoded, back of, uh, I think all of SACD players had a low-pass filter where you could tell the player, once it's decoded and it's got all this junk in here, to filter out some of this. And some of them had two switches, two settings, like 50 killers and 70 killers, and none, I guess. Um, and uh, some of them, I think, only had a single switch. Excuse me. Um, but either way, they had a rolled off. But when we get this thing now as a raw format delivered to us, they gave it to us like this, and our DACs don't know, even if you have a, a DSD DAC, doesn't know to apply any filtering to this. So when you play this as a digital file, the entire thing gets transmitted to your amplifier and to your uh, um, speakers. And if you look at the level in here, uh, it is lower than the, our peak over here, but it's also much higher than the actual spectrum of music at high frequencies in here. So this is non-trivial amount of noise to be pumping into the, uh, um, the, the speaker and amplifier. The amp may oscillate, the tweeter may be unhappy, uh, or do nothing, I don't know. Uh, but certainly, you know, why do we want to download a bunch of noise? This file was 350 megabytes for one track. Uh, on this thing. Remember, entire six CD is 650 megabytes. So this is half a CD for one track. And bulk of what we're getting is noise. And noise, unfortunately, cannot be compressed losslessly. So even though they delivered this as a zip file to us, that, 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 that portion of it cannot be compressed or made any smaller, and that's why the files are so big. So not a good thing, but you know, this is the decision they've made, and they think DSD64 is cat's meow, and it's the best format there is, and that's why they're raw recorded in that format. So, in my opinion, it's a mistake in this day and age. There's no reason to use this. Uh, you want to go ahead and capture in the best format, which is PCM format today. Or at least use higher sample rate DSD. Don't use DSD64 uh, on this thing. So let's now switch away from uh, from this guy and bring up Adobe Edition. Um, I'm gonna shut this guy off. So uh, let me bring Audition up for me. All right. So I've got three versions of uh, the file loaded. Um, first one is uh, 192 kilohertz. I don't know if you can see it down here. It says 192 kilohertz, and it says 24-bit format. The next one is 96 kilohertz, and the last one is 44.1 uh, kilohertz for CD sample rate. So if I go play the uh, first one and then bring this back. Oops, sorry. I told you that in reverse order. Uh, or did I? No, I didn't load the high uh, sample rate. Well, come on. You can do it. Ah, shoot. Right into a bug. <laughs> All right, let me play the 96 killer version for you. Uh, for some reason, additions got confused on the 192 killer version. Now, this is the 96 killer sample I'm playing. Let me pause it. Look at what's happened. We have our piano notes over here. Then we have what more or less doesn't seem to change a whole lot. And then above that, we have that massive hump that we had with the uh, uh, DSD file, which means that they encoded all this junk when they converted that DSD file into PCM. And that's a mistake. The convention when you convert DSD files to PCM is to actually apply a, a, a software filter and get rid of this noise because this is now inside of our format that, that we're playing. And PCM has this rectangular bandwidth and it's quite a large area that is encoding. And we're now shipping you all junk. This file is even bigger than DSD file. It's about 450 megabytes for one track. And, oh, sorry, the 192 is. This one's half the size. And clearly, this is all unwanted junk. So let me play the rest of it for you. You can see that the meaningful part is really up to about 20 to 23 kilohertz. Nothing above is changing, it's just static noise. And again, the level is quite high. The level is as high as what four or six kilohertz would be in, in the music. So we don't want that. This shouldn't have been there. Uh, if they had rolled that off, um, this file would have been smaller and uh, the download would have 
taken less time. Uh, by the way, this entire package was nine gigabyte worth of uh, data to download. So quite big for multiple versions. So now let's go to the uh, final version they gave us, which is 44.1 kilohertz, 24 bit. Uh, oftentimes this is uh, distributed at 16 bits. You could just burn into a CD if you wanted to do that. A little unusual to see it in 24 bit, but I take it, that's a good thing. Uh, we don't want them to try to uh, uh, try to uh, do that conversion of uh, down to 16 bits, which they could get, uh, they could screw up as well. So now we see that basically the 44.1 kilohertz version uh, is capturing everything we needed in this track. There was no reason to have any more than that. Maybe a little bit more. So 48 kilohertz uh, would have been the uh, uh, ideal sample rate for this that would have captured everything we want and it would truncate all the DSD64 noise that was delivered to us in our higher res packages on this thing. So uh, it's a miss on multiple fronts. Um, clearly no measurements were performed uh, to look at the spectrum of the file they created. I think, I don't care how much you love this format, if you just looked at the original format and, and saw the uh, uh, let me bring that back again. Um, you know, you saw this thing and it didn't change. Any smart person would say, hmm, how is this good for sound? <laughs> why, you know, why not just put a noise generator in the player, have it spit out noise if, if all we want to do is, is ship out noise. The other thing is just the content that they produce. This is a uh, piano piece. Uh, it's close mic um, so it has basically, it's kind of dry, there's no room ambience in there, and it doesn't have any of the trimmings that I associate with audiophile music. Uh, no regular person, you know, that'll actually listen to music is going to go download or know about this high-risk download. Only audiophiles are going to go get them, and many of them get them to just show off their, their systems. And this is just not great sounding music that I would want to demo any systems with. It doesn't have nice decays, doesn't have room ambience uh, on this thing. Um, I, I don't know anything about recording stuff, so I don't want to tell them how they should record it, but I do know the audience. I go to shows all the time and listen to audiophile tracks that people use to show off systems, and I know the audiophile mindset of what they want to do, uh, Diana Crawl kind of thing, <laughs> you know, music. And this is not it. It's just a solo piano. It doesn't have any high frequency content, so the notion that you want to have high res for it doesn't play. The music itself is also uninspiring. It sounds like the kind of music that they would have in a high-end restaurant with somebody playing, you know, piano in the corner. Uh, you know, that obviously is subjective, but I don't know what you hang your hat on as far as this. The recording is, is not correct and proper. It suffers from limitations of the ST64. It's got ju uh, junk shoved into PCM, converted files. Uh, the f subjective fidelity is not there, you know, it's, you know, the music sounds like it's in your head because the microphones are inside the, or close to a piano. And uh, and the type of music is like, hmm, okay, at least Diana Crawl, I can listen to to the music and enjoy it as uh, for what it is uh, until I get sick of it. <laughs> but it's got some appeal. I don't know. This doesn't seem to have anything going for it. And then it's $29. So, courtesy of uh, me spending the $29 instead of you, you all know what the deal uh, What the deal in here is. I don't recommend the music for anything, uh, any purpose. Uh, if you want to do a format comparison, maybe it's a good way to, to uh, uh, take it, although the label L2 has great format comparison and uh, uh, has it in all different formats and it's a free download. Much better music too, by the way, and better recorded than, than this stuff. So uh, make a long story short, uh, the uh, music produced by PS Audio's label is a little bit like their own products, you know, a mix of good stuff and, and mix of buying into folklore of thinking DST64 is cat's meow and something's great about it. and you know, we're recording wider bandwidth and therefore something's good about it. No, we're shoving a bunch of noise into people's system and uh, and uh, if you try to p play the PCM version, you're just, you know, carrying more noise than, than content in there. So, you know, uh, ho-hum, you know, it's a pass for me. 
Okay, hopefully you learned something out of this one if you're not interested in this music as far as the different formats, PCM, DSD, and so forth. Uh, I will keep explaining these concepts in future videos, but I thought I, I'd give you an introduction in this one. Okay, see you in a future video. Bye-bye.